Who would you say is your favourite fictional president? Leslie Nielsen from Scary Movie 3. It's not even a competition. <laughs> not Harrison Ford, Air oh. Force One. No, that's a pretty good one. That's a strong fictional... Get off my plane! That's a strong <laughs> fictional president. Well, can he piss out his finger? I don't think so. <laughs> I forgot he does that. We're not so different after all. Yes. <laughs> Send flowers to their bitches and hoes. <laughs> According to various interviews given during and after his presidency, during his time as leader of the free world, Barack Obama spent a considerable amount of his time dunking on various members of his cabinet. Oddly, contrary to what you would expect given the fact he was the fucking president at the time, Barack Obama always told his staff to try as hard as they could to whoop his ass. How old was Barack Obama when he was president? About 50. So I can't imagine whooping the ass of a 50-year-old man to be that difficult. What, well, a basketball? No. Or many other things. Also no. But oddly, it was with Obama because he played basketball in college. And you'd think, obviously, it's a sport where you have to be able to jump, what, half a dozen vertical feet into the air and, like, dodge past fridge-sized gentlemen with, like, the speed and reflexes of, like, some sort of cheater man. But Obama was apparently a really fucking good basketball player, despite his age. As like various clips of him just like, you know, effortlessly throwing three pointers online can attest to. Not wanting the skills he developed in college to dull, Obama let it be known amongst members of his cabinet that he was always down to throw down at a game of basketball at a moment's notice. So you said he played against members of his cabinet? Yeah, and his staff whenever he had the time. Were they any good at basketball? They were, because Barack Obama went out of his way to staff his cabinet exclusively with people he knew had played ball in college to make sure he always had a healthy pool of opponents to choose from whenever he felt like styling on a motherfucker. I love that he, had, like, he might have had like a stack of CVs in front of him and the only deciding factor between two equally good yeah, politicians... Yeah, whether they play basketball in college. Play basketball. And there's a quote from like some sports journalist somewhere that says, yeah, this is probably the, mo the most talented basketball playing cabinet we've ever had in office. <laughs> because Obama always prioritised a person we had to play basketball. Like I say, if it was two equally skilled candidates going for a wrong, if one of them had played ball in college, that was the deciding factor. Because it meant he had another opponent to play against whenever he felt like playing basketball that day. In addition to making sure his cabinet was full of people who played basketball in college, Obama additionally honed his skills by cutting his teeth against the best players in the world by frequently inviting former and current members of the NBA to come play basketball with him at the White House. You can't even be mad at an abuse of power like that, can you? Because it's just so petty. It's like, I want to play basketball. <laughs> Fuck it, bring in Michael Jordan. So you know the first thing Barack Obama did when he was in office? I love this story. Right? One of his first official acts as president is he invited Denzel Washington to the White House to play basketball. There was an interview with Denzel Washington. And he asked him, so did you go easy on the president? He's like, no, I fucking whooped his ass. Because <laughs> Denzel's like, I'm not gonna, I don't care if he's the president, I'm still going to kick his ass. And I love that idea. That Barack Obama's like, yeah, I'm just going to invite Denzel Washington to the White House because I'm the president now, and then whoop his ass at basketball. And Denzel's like, no, you're not. I'd love it if he got into politics just because he knew one day, as president, he could play with all these famous people. Well, he played with loads of them. Like, there's so many stories in playing on famous people. Even, like, you know, actual current members of the NBA said, yeah, he's old as shit and he doesn't practice as much as he can because he's too busy being president. But I can see he's got some skills. I can appreciate him for that. I love that idea. <laughs> just Obama's just there balling with all these, like, NBA stars. And they're like, oh, yeah, just humour him. He's the president. And he does, like, the scene from like the David Chappelle Prince skit where he just does like a twisting overhead like backboard smasher and it's like that's grinding on the fucking post and they're like wow we should probably tell this guy seriously he's got skills he knows what he's doing is this reaching a point now where you're going to get me to take that shot of Dave Chappelle as Prince humping the ground. And put Obama's, and put Obama's, face, Obama's on face on it. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. I wasn't going to suggest it, but since you brought it up, you may as well. So Obama was using his presidential power yes. to invite NBA stars over so he could play basketball with them. Pretty much, yeah. I'm honestly surprised he didn't try flexing the full might of his president penis by trying to get a sequel to Space Jam made where he was the star. According to those lucky enough to now say they balled with the leader of the free world, playing against Obama was a nerve-wracking experience. I'm assuming that's because he had an entourage of secret service agents just gathered around him in a circle so that nobody could get to him. <laughs> just at all times. He's doing that six-pack manoeuvre from that football advert. <laughs> it's like the reason he's so good at basketball is he runs down the court dribbling, but he's got like a perfect circle of secret service agents just tasing people who come near him, like the Batmobile in Arkham Knight. 
shit. Have you seen that? No. Like in, like in Arkham Knight, you get the Batmobile. Yeah. But, like, obviously, what's the first thing you're going to try and do when playing with a Batmobile? Run people over. But Batman doesn't kill. So what they do is they put a little animation of when you hit people, a little a little taser, so they bounce off the Batmobile. It's like, they're not dead, they just got tased. As you see, like, their corpse go... Just... It's like, I was playing the new Spider-Man game. Oh, and, and you kick people off the edge of the building. There was a bit where I kicked him so far and watched him fall down, and he fell about 40 or 50 stories and landed on a fountain with a web on him. Yeah. Yeah, because the, what they do is they put a little animation in that game, which I appreciate, where every time you kick someone off the edge, spider on go, Shh, and web them. So the idea is they're not dead, they're getting webbed when they hit the floor. But I'm pretty sure, regardless of how much web he throws at them, if they're falling like 40 stories, they're hitting that ground with enough Oh, they're force. going down, they're dead. But I just love that idea, just Obama, just dribbling his way across the court. Like, I'm so good at basketball. It's just like professional NBA stars getting tased in front of him. It's like when Mr. Burns goes bowling, isn't it? And Smithers just kicks over the pins at the end. Do you think that was the same with uh, Obama, but it was Joe Biden doing that instead? Every time Obama no, I... took a shot, Joe Biden runs up and dunks <laughs> it for him. Yeah. It's like, he throws the ball, it goes off into the bushes. A Secret Service agent just passes the ball to Joe Biden, he climbs up a fence and says, Duff. As amusing as it is to think that the reason it was so scary to play against Obama is because you might get tased by a Secret Service agent or worse, it's actually because of his swarming, offence-orientated style of play and win-at-all-costs attitude. You say win at all costs, surely everybody wants to win. They do, but Obama wanted to win fairly. And it's noted one of the few things that would piss him off while playing basketball is people not taking the game seriously or trying to go easy on him. That reminds me of that prince in A Knight's Tale, the one who really wants to joust. That's actually a pretty good comparison. So if people haven't seen A Knight's Tale, it's a film about jousting starring Heath Ledger. We've talked about it before, there's a video about it, go watch it. Don't read the comments though. And there's a bit... <laughs> In that, where there's a prince who wants to joust, and every time he tries to joust, people say, oh shit, it's the prince. I want to drop out and just, like, you know, retire from this event. And he wins by default. And the prince gets really pissed off about it. He's like, I know I'm a prince, but try and treat me like an ordinary person. I just want to joust. And I like that Obama's there, like, I know I'm the president, I just want to play basketball. Treat me like an ordinary guy. There's 16 snipers just point laser sights at their balls. And they're like... I'm sorry, Mr. President, I can't. So what Obama used to do to get people to play seriously is he trash talk them during games. <laughs> so if they were going easy on him and he could tell they're going easy on him, he'd just start talking shit. And they obviously they get so pissed off and start to play seriously because like they might not want to foul the president, but they also don't want to get made look a fool by the president. <laughs> that sounds like a video game tactic. It is a video game tactic. That's how you beat Virgil in Devil May Cry 3. Because <laughs> if you taunt Virgil in that game, he just goes, now I'm motivated, assumes Devil Trigger form, and just endlessly helm breakers like 40,000 times. And I imagine that's what Obama did. <laughs> he sees someone taking it easy on him, obviously not like, you know, respecting his skills as a baller. And he just goes like, he just does the Dante taunt of like, Hey, come on! And like you just see, just all the members of his cabinet were playing against him. Enter Devil Trigger mode, slick the hair back, say now I'm motivated. Just that helm break running with the basketball. Just imagine this clip now of Virgil going ham on Dante's asshole, but there's a basketball in the hand instead of a sword. <laughs> That's what a farmer's opponents would do when he pissed him off enough. You know? More video games need to be like Devil May Cry 3, where your opponents respond to your taunts. So a lot of games have taunts, but the idea of taunting and your opponent responds to it always cracks me up. And that's why I love Revengeance, because when you play as Jetstream Sam, his like gameplay mechanic is shit talking, and every enemy in the game, including robots, respond to getting taunted. And you can taunt Metal Gear Ray. Metal Gear Ray, an unmanned robot, gets salty when it's taunted. <laughs> like you can taunt a robot and the robot gets salt. It's amazing. More games need that shit. It's like in Bayonetta, you can like taunt God and God gets annoyed about it. <laughs> it's like Devil May Cry, you can taunt Satan and he gets pissed. Have you ever played Prop Hunt? I have not played Prop Hunt now. Oh no wait, it's the one you just like you go around on a can of coke. Yeah, you basically, you transform into an object in the scene and hide, yeah. it's like hide and see but as an object. There's a taunt button in that and usually if you're playing online you can't be found, people tend to taunt, but the taunts are random and it can either be like a quick laugh or a full song. <laughs> so if you accidentally press the taunt button and it's a full song, then everyone just goes, he's there and chases you down. Oh man. As childish as that might sound to some people out there, taunting does work and make you play seriously, as anyone who's played video games can attest to. Because 
I'll tell you what, when I got sniped in Halo 3 and I saw someone come and teabag my corpse, I would do that thing that all gamers instinctually do when they start taking shit seriously and lean forward and sit on the edge of the couch and put my, my elbows on my knees and go, alright, this guy's fucking had it now. And put your fi face like three inches from the screen. That, that, that's like transforming into focus mode. It is, isn't it? That's like the mo that's the slicking your hair back moment, but it's like a lot more lame. It's just, ugh. During his time as president, Obama's pickup game against his staff and cabinet became the stuff of a White House legend. To the point where Obama, his staff, and his aides, who all played basketball together, had their own private email thread where they'd arrange games and shit on each other's skill. I love that idea. It's like, ooh, I've got an email from the president, the president of the United States of fucking America. I wonder what it says. It's just the poop emoji. It's like, oh, oh yeah, that makes sense. Just the idea of Obama being a catty asshole in email threads, I love it. Great. So Obama just wanted to be treated like an ordinary guy when he played some basketball? Pretty much, yeah. But if I was playing against him, I'd constantly be hesitating anywhere near him when I watched the Secret Service guys wandering around the edge of the car, yeah. just ready to run in. That was a problem, and uh, according to like, you know, people who played with Obama, initially the Secret Service would rush in and separate people when they crowded the president, you know, as much as their job, and Obama eventually started getting so pissed off with this, he'd wave them off and tell them, it's part of the game, stop ruining it for me, just stand and watch, it's fine. Obama reportedly enjoyed the hustle and bustle of pickup games so much that when a guy called Ray Deserega elbowed him in the face during a pickup game, an injury that resulted in the president needing 12 stitches, he found the whole thing hilarious. So Obama found it funny that he got elbowed in the face and needed 12 stitches. Yeah, and according to like, you know, Ray Deserega, he said, after the fact he was shitting bricks. He's like, I just elbowed the president in the face. And obviously, immediately after it happened, like Obama was crowded by security who dragged him out while blood was pouring from his nose. And he's like, oh shit, am I gonna get in trouble? And he says, a couple of days later, he got like, you know, a letter from the president. And he's like thinking, oh God, am I getting fired? Is this like treason papers or some shit? And he opened it up and inside was a photo of the exact moment he clocked Obama in the face with his elbow complete with a note from Obama himself saying congratulations on being the first man in human history to punch the president and get away with it. How did Obama actually manage to get a picture of that? Well, something people might not know is that when you're president, there's a guy who follows you around taking pictures of pretty much everything you do for historical record, and uh, Obama's photographer just so happened to capture the exact moment he was elbowed in the middle of his face. And Obama got that photo, had it framed, and sent to Deseraker as a gift, with, as I said, with a note saying, congrats on the first guy to clock the president and get away with it. I think that's really nice of him, because even though he's like the president and he's clearly the most important person on that car, he at least has some humility. Yeah, and um, while you're thinking that, I should point out that Obama would do the exact opposite, and when his photographer happens to capture the exact moment he crossed someone up or dunked on them, he would similarly have that photo framed and sent to the person in it, complete with a note saying, get better, scrub. <laughs> As amusing as this story is, one part of it that always annoys me is the fact that Obama never thought to make members of his Secret Service part of his team. Can you imagine how good on defence members of the Secret Service would be? Can you imagine how good at blocking shots they'd fucking be? Just like, oh no, it's going to go in, they pull out a gun and just shoot it out of the air. No, what I'd have done if I was Obama is I'd have, I'd have set up an American football team where his Secret Service guys were on his team with him, so if they gave him the ball and he ran, their job is to stop anyone getting to Just him. the wedge. Yeah. You know, I think the flying V, wasn't it, from uh, the Mighty Ducks. Only secret security guys with just knives just stabbing people as they go up. It's established that Obama was good at basketball, but I'm just thinking, what about if he wasn't and his secret security guys were just cheating for him the entire time and he didn't realise it because they're, like, they're so good at their job. And he thought he was good at every single sport. I'm just picturing like, the various sports like darts. <laughs> where he, like, he'll throw it, and then as he turns around to take a sip of his drink, one of his guys... Yeah, he one of those, like, CIA, like, dart gun things that can give you a heart attack and fight into the middle of the ball. Yeah, one of his Secret Service snipers shoots his dart out of the air, and someone behind him with a sniper rifle fires the dart. Is that even when he's 20. playing pool? It's like that moment, isn't it, uh, where Homer's in charge of the stonecutters, and they're all playing without their cards facing Homer. <laughs> and Obama just thinks he's really good. It's like, man, you guys suck at this. And you just never realise, because his Secret Service guys are always, like, you know, helping him win. What sport do you reckon would be most impacted for the opponents if they knew that there were trained snipers pointing at the pitch? I think all of them. <laughs> There's like a sport that requires ultimate concentration, like golf. 
We actually like well, like all presidents involved. play golf, don't they? Some more than others, apparently. But it's the idea that um, uh, I think JFK is my favourite example of a golf playing president because JFK was apparently an amazing golfer. Like they said, like he could have gone pro, but he downplayed his own golf skill. Like he limited his own skill and pretend he wasn't that good at the game because he wanted to appear like an everyman to his constituents and like the people of America. So he thought like golf's a rich man's game. If I'm good at it it doesn't reflect well on me. So he just said, oh yeah, I'd just never talk about golf, even though I can like whoop anyone's ass at it. And then you've got Obama sending pictures of him <laughs> dunking on people. Just like, yeah, then you just like, smash cut to Obama and just sending pictures of like, his balls in someone's face as he's like just hanging onto the hoop. It'd be amazing if Kennedy was beating people at golf and sending them pictures of him, like getting these amazing shots. Just putting it with his, just smashing it to his wang and it's like... <laughs> <laughs> 